A self-balancing unicycle experimental vehicle from Honda to be shown at the Tokyo Motor Show next month might just be history in the making. Weighing less than 10 kilo, the 24 inch by 12 inch by 6 inch U3X experimental vehicle is small enough to be carried onto an aeroplane as hand luggage, has a wheel which spins in two planes, not one, and there's no doubt it has the potential to challenge, perhaps even change, society's concept of personal mobility. Little more than a century after mass market personal transport became a reality, the mobility market seems set for a renaissance thanks to the need for zero emission vehicles, the development of much better electric motors, rapidly improving battery technology and the exploding field of material science. Mass-produced personal transport currently comes in two, three and four-wheeled forms and much of the design of the transportation we have seen until now has been based around the need to put a motor somewhere and for vehicles to be stable. But with electric motors now capable of fitting inside wheels, new materials and technologies beginning to catch up with science fiction and an army of young designers unrestrained by old thinking, the concept of personal transport seems set to evolve into forms that we have hardly before imagined. We all know that lugging several tonnes of metal around with us in the form of a car is incredibly inefficient. We developed that form factor because engines were big and heavy and needed to be safely housed a hundred years ago. But now that Dean Kamen's Segway has proven the viability and reliability of self-balancing technology, we don't need four wheels, and the massive reduction in weight makes the unicycle the most efficient vehicle available, simply because it's not carrying anything it doesn't need. At the IBC conference a fortnight ago in, in Amsterdam, I spent time riding a device known as the hands-free transporter, which is a Segway derivative with the normal handlebars replaced by controls held between the knee. I initially gingerly stepped aboard the hands-free, but within a few metres my brain had got it. A minute or two later I was turning and moving the hands-free with incredible acuity. There was no accelerator, no brake, no steering wheel, just body English, and it worked so intuitively that before I'd stepped off it, I was imagining the machine as a solution for mass personal transport. The hands-free is not just a last mile solution, but a last 10 mile solution. It does 20 kilometres an hour, and it was as close to mind controlled vehicle as I've experienced, and I've ridden or driven just about everything available in the last three decades. And I'm expecting the Honda unicycle to be every bit as easy to ride as the hands-free. I know it sounds kind of scary and you're probably wondering what it will be like. I guarantee you will love the experience because it's so easy it almost doesn't require any thought at all. Honda's U3X unicycle is much smaller than the hands-free, about one-fifth the weight, and has even more freedom of movement because it moves in all directions just as if you were walking. Where the Segway moves backward and forward and turns, the U3X moves backward and forward and sideways too, and it does it all seamlessly. An example of just how far we've advanced our concept of personal transport in just a short time is the Embryo, a self-balancing unicycle design shown by Bombardier, which is now BRP, in 2003, six years ago. The design study anticipated what type of personal transport we might be using in the year 2025. The embryo was conceived by BRP using technologies it expected to achieve mass market viability in the ensuing 22 years. And I remember writing the story and thinking how much it sounded like science fiction. Though Honda's U3X is still experimental, it weighs just 10 kilo and it is already in prototype form, and just six years later, it is one sixteenth of the weight of the embryo envisioned for 2025, and that's still more than a decade and a half away. And though the hands-free is a two-wheeled rather than one-wheeled device, it is a top speed of 20 kilometres an hour, weighs just 50 kilos, and you can buy one right now. Honda's U3X was developed to be in harmony with people and with its small size and putting the rider at the same eye level as other footpath users, it is non-threatening and will mix comfortably with pedestrian traffic, though Honda is obviously conducting real-world testing to verify this. Like the Segway and hands-free, the U3X's speed is adjusted by shifting body weight, though it adds a whole new dimension in that it goes sideways too, 
thanks to the ingenious omnidirection wheel system, which Honda has dubbed its hot drive system, which is short for Honda Omnitraction Drive System. It's the enabling technology for this machine, and it gives Honda a real competitive advantage as new forms of transport evolve. It will be very hard to match the U3X's capabilities if you don't have Honda's hot drive. And it's one of the coolest things you've ever seen if you're mechanically inclined, and it consists of many small motor control wheels connected to form one large wheel. Forward and backward movement is done by moving the large wheel, and the side-to-side -side movement is done by moving the small wheels. By combining both, the U3X moves diagonally, though to the rider, it will probably be more like thinking, I'll go that way, and away it goes. Now, standing back and trying to view the U3X with some historical perspective, it's quite possible that 100 years from now, when battery technology has improved its energy density several orders of magnitude, this machine might well be viewed in the same light as the first examples of the automobile produced by Carl Benz and Gottlieb Daimler 120 years ago. Clearly, personal transport must get smaller and lighter, particularly if it is to share the footpath with humans made of flesh and blood. It also makes sense to make personal transportation devices easily backpackable so they can be carried on public transport. The hands-free is too big to take by train, but at just two feet tall by 12 inches by six inches, the U3X is so small it would never disrupt crowd flow or obstruct a railway carriage as we often see with bicycles on public transport around the world. It's a viable motorised last mile solution right now. It's the first of a new breed of personal transport. So congratulations to Honda R&D Corporation's Fundamental Technology Research Centre in Saitama in Japan for redefining next generation mobility. The centre was also the birthplace of Honda's bipedal humanoid robot Asimo back in 1986 and the centre has developed ASIMO through more than 30 iterations in the last two decades along the way. FTR is also where the remarkable walking assist devices the company has been showing over the last two years took shape, and we can't wait to see what they come up with next. My bet is that the form factor of the U3X is probably very close to what we'll see when it reaches market. Just when that will be is anybody's guess, and will most probably be dictated by advances in battery technology. With the world's most prolific demographic, the post-war baby boom moving into old age, Honda and the world's number one automobile manufacturer, Toyota, both recognise that low-speed footpath-bound mobility assist devices will be in great demand a decade from now. Toyota has also shown both walking chair and wheeled chair mobility assist devices in addition to its wheeled exoskeletons, the most recent of which, the iReel, I tried at the last Tokyo Motor Show in 2007. Like the Segway and the BRP Embryo and the hands-free, the U3X uses sensors and electric motors to remain upright, with the balance control technology originally developed through Honda's robotic research for ASIMO and adapted for the unicycle. The sensors detect slight changes in the incline of the device based on the weight shift of the rider and a microprocessor determines the rider's intentions in terms of direction and speed. Based on that data, the machine delivers smooth, agile movements and simple operation, all controlled by weight shift alone. I expect it to be very, very good. Though the Tokyo Motor Show is still three weeks away and promises to deliver the first wave of Japanese electric cars that we'll actually see in showrooms, I'd be very surprised if the U3X isn't the vehicle that will be in the history books a century from now. It just might be a landmark device in transportation history. It's that significant.